Hello everybody, and before we start the video, I'd like to tell you this video contains spoilers for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate World of Light. So if you don't want to see them, then I suggest clicking off the video now. If not, then let's begin. Dracula is definitely a unique boss in World of Light, and I personally think that is what makes him so challenging, or at least for me, he was. To start off, I will show you who I used and the spirits I used to defeat him. As you can see in the background, I'm showing you all the skill tree things I have. You don't need all of them, or all the ones I have, but it wouldn't hurt. Also, as you can tell, I am using Donkey Kong for this. That is for a number of reasons I'll get into later in the video. But again, you don't need to use Donkey Kong, but it definitely wouldn't hurt as that's what I'll be using and you can you go off of what I do. So the primary spirit I'll be using for this is Gino. This is because he has a good increase in both offense and defense, which is really helpful when dealing with bosses in general. And the two support spirits I will be using are the Great Fairy and Rathalos. Rathalos, if that's even how you say it, increases items and attacks in the air. We'll be using aerial attacks heavily in the first stage of the fight, so it's really important to have it. The Great Fairy increases health when at a critical damage, which can essentially undo one of the opponent's hits, which pretty much saves you at some points, especially in the second phase of the Dracula fight. Now then, since we know who to use, let's go over how to beat him. There's a lot more things to do in this fight than you might think you'll need to do to win. One of the biggest mistakes people make is rushing him in the beginning. Don't rush him in the beginning. If you do, he'll most likely start with an attack that is very hard to dodge and can deal a lot of damage. He doesn't always do this, but you definitely don't want to have to be dealing with that instead of the move that he will almost always go for if you don't rush him. Instead of rushing him, you can charge up your neutral and be ready to parry with a perfect shield, or you can spot dodge or use a normal shield. I do strongly, though, recommend you use a perfect shield. It will help you a lot in this fight, and if you get this special um, skill tree stuff, you can actually heal some damage from perfect shielding, which you're definitely going to need in this fight. If you're not good at perfect shielding, this is a great way to practice, and if it's not working out, I recommend you go into training, put on Samus, have her put on her neutral, and just keep spot, um, perfect shielding. That's how I did it, and it helps a lot in this fight. After you parry the fire, you will want to sprint towards Dracula and hit him with a fair. It is very hard to, and you'll most likely miss it by a frame or two, but it can't hurt and it might give you a free hit. I did get it once or twice while practicing this, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. But nonetheless, it's still worth trying because you get yourself in a better position and you might get a free hit, which can help you much later on. The ordering of his moves from here are a bit random, but I'll explain how to deal with them in the order I got them. But regardless, if you're close enough before he tries to attack, run towards him and hit him with a bear or dare. Dares hit harder and, har and are harder to hit. Fairs are always a safe option to go with if you don't know which one you should try. Certain situations require you to only go for fairs as you can get two of them instead of one dare, which two fairs are better than a dare. It's also a good point to mention that no moves that are grounded can hit him, so no smash attacks will work on Dracula. Your neutral, side B, up B, and down B all will work, but they aren't as heavy hitting and they oftentimes take longer to set up or put you in bad positions. It is also a good time to mention you could try a bear if you're far away, but that's really good if you only know how to do a reverse aerial rush. I will have a link in the description to do that, but I wouldn't watch it for the purpose of this video. I'd watch it just to learn how to do it. But it, if you don't know how to do it, then there's no point. Just put yourself in a safe spot and then wait for him to do his attack. The first move can be the best or worst move when trying to feed Dracula. In total, you can get three fares on him or take a load of damage. As you can see, this move has Dracula turn into bats and fly across the screen. It can be easily avoided if you know where he stops on the screen. 
I will put a red line on the pillar which he never crosses. And this does work on both sides in case you're wondering. After that, you'll have to hit him twice with the fair. It does not work with the dare since you have to jump up in the air and get into the perfect spot. With the fair, you only need to be in a decent spot, not the perfect spot. And if you look at Dracula's HP at the end of the second, after the second consecutive fair, you can see how much the total three fairs do. The second move is very simple. It's easy to dodge and you don't need a perfect shield. You can if you want, but it's pointless. Even if you parry a red orb, it's too slow to hit Dracula, but you can get a fair at the end of this move. The third move is similar to the move in the very beginning, but this time there are three beams of fire that shot up from the ground. This move isn't hard to avoid, and as seen in the clip, will only do 19 if you were hit by a beam. The clip also shows Dracula using this move at close range, and it having a much more devastating effect, dealing 29 damage. This is a good reason to keep distance from Dracula when he's about to use a move instead of trying to get an extra fair, dare, or bear. The fourth move can also come out in the beginning and is very simple too. I still recommend charging up neutral before I unleash the attack. You also can parry this attack and deal some damage to Dracula, so it's definitely worth it to perfect shield. It also can come out at random times and can be dealt with with normal shields. The fifth move is, again, very simple. It can shoot out two to six beams of fire that give, time, that give you plenty of time to avoid. Sometimes you get lucky and can hit Dracula multiple times, other times you just have to sit and wait till the move's over. Finally, the sixth and final move. This is the worst move. It's a mixture of the fifth and fourth move, but the beams of fire spawn under you one at a time. This move is so hard to avoid and to parry objects back that usually if you get it, your chances are over. You're probably going to get at least 40 damage from it, and uh, yeah, you're better off restarting. I don't have any clips of it, but trust me, you'll know when you see it. And it only occurs when you're too close to Dracula. In my five test runs, I never encountered it doing this method, so you don't have much to worry about. It's not like every now and then you're just gonna get screwed. Trust me, as long as you keep your distance, Dracula will not use this move. Using the tips I gave you, you should have little to no struggles with beating Dracula. Or that's what you might think. Now we enter the real reason why Dracula is so hard. His second form. So you might be thinking, surely you can't beat Dracula's first form, then beat his second, more challenging form, and live to see the end, right? Well, you can. And I did. And I'll show you how. First things first. You will want to be on the side of him that's closest to the center. If you're on the other side, he can easily push you into the blast zone, and you'll need to redo the full first form again. Step 2. The second form of Dracula can be hit by anything like a normal boss. So while the animation is going on for him to change, charge up one of your smash attacks. It doesn't really matter which one you do, whichever one you think is the most powerful so you can hit it hard. But make sure you wait until its health bar pops up or it might not register the hit. Then third, hit it with your, your neutral. This will rack up extra damage and will be really, really crucial in taking this down. From this point, the moves don't follow a pattern. It's just luck. But nonetheless, I can still prepare you for what to expect. Your great fairy will activate around 90%. So if you made it through the first form with under 30%, you did amazing. But to defeat the second form, Dracula does one key thing, and that is his jump. The jump makes him go all the way to the edge, and this is perfect for landing a fair. But be careful, he will not most likely hit you as soon as you do this, so be ready to attack. So I'm going to give a brief summary of each move and what to do when Dracula uses it. First is his jump punch. The initial jump does 10 damage, and the punch downwards does 26 damage and a lot of knockback but he really only does this once so there's not much to worry about second his scratches 
They don't do a lot of damage or knockback and can be easily avoided. Third, long jump. This move usually goes over you, but if he aims for you, it can be easily dodged by rolls or a spot dodge. I'm not sure about a shield, it would mostly break though, since it's a powerful move. I wouldn't try it. Fourth, his electric breath. A very powerful move with tons of knockback. If you see him charging it and you can't shield, be ready to attack. Also, with shield durability up, you can survive by holding shield and it can't be reflected back. Fifth, this thing. I don't know what it is, but it's very hard perfect shield, and I don't think it can be reflected. Better off shielding than trying to dodge. Sixth, punch. A very powerful punch that'll kill, but has virtually no range. So as long as you're not close, you don't have to worry about it. Last one, fire breath. Pretty much the same as original, but there's a random beam of fire in there. I don't know how much it does as it reflected all the ones during testing does a decent bit of damage on Dracula when reflected, so you're best off ref trying to perfect shield than just normal shield. Last things to mention. The stage has poison damage on the second form of Dracula, so don't stall or you'll rack up damage. Watch your health. If you're too high in percentage, it might be wise to go for quick attacks like bear, rather than long and heavy hitting ones like smash attack. A good run for the first form of Dracula is 0-30%. These were my most common that led me to almost defeating the second form in the test runs. Don't give up if your first form of Dracula is bad. I did this run that I succeeded in to prove that bad run in the first form can still win. It's all about how you play the second form. Also, if you keep losing, take a break. It's been scientifically proven that if you're frustrated or angry, you don't think the same and you might make bold and riskier moves that lead to failure. Also, keep in mind, I did this on hard mode, so it may vary on medium and easy mode. Alright, now that you've seen all the moves and I've explained everything, I'm going to play the full thing for you, the way you can see how it's done in all its glory. Anyway, it's not the most beautiful run, uh, like I already said, I didn't try to go for the best because I wanted to see if it was possible, and it is. Um, I wouldn't bet on it. It was a lot of luck, and honestly, if I had one of my previous runs where I had 15%, it would have been much, much easier. But thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want me to make more videos like this, let me know also. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye!